the only cedar, cedar supplier that, are, that is both brands and code mark appraised for weatherboard systems. Um, my role is more to deal with, uh, with builders and the merchants, uh, where Hamish is more involved with the technical side, with architects, councils, as well as um, the, the end user, the builder. So Hamish will, will, will explain more of our um, vertical shiplap and bevel back and horizontal uh, weatherboard options and, and, and how to install. And then from there, yes, in, any questions, in, any queries, please ask. Um, as Hamish would probably say, that there are no silly questions, there are no stupid questions. Um, any question is fine for us to try and uh, to try and answer for you. So, Hamish, this is, uh, he'll, 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 he'll kick it off. Thanks, Rhys. Thanks, Thanks, Yuan. Thanks for inviting us along. Um, in front of you, you will see um, on each table there should be some folders like that. So what I've done, if you don't have one, let me you know. Um, there is a vertical installation for vertical shiplap, horizontal shiplap, and bevel back shiplap. And what I've done is I've put together a pack that I would give normally to a builder that will show all of the details, all the drawings, the installation specification, and a checklist that shows that it's good to go through and just to check off that you make sure you've done everything properly. Vertical shiplap is a building system that is outside of the building code. Okay, so it's really important to remember that. We've created a system to make sure that if you put it up properly, it's brands appraised and warranted for the next 15 to 20 years. If you don't put it together properly, you open yourself up to liability. So please have a look at the system. There are bits of it we can adjust and there's bits of it we can't adjust, but we want you to put it together properly and I'm here to help you to do that so that you can cover yourself. And you're not covering yourself today or tomorrow or in five years, it's in 15 years time. A repad can cost four, five, six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollars we don't want to get to that situation. I'd rather fix it here. Reese said there's no silly questions. My record is nine houses. Take it off and do it again. So that's $500,000 mistake just in the seat. So if you've got a question, please ask. I'd rather answer it here than the phone call that I got from the gentleman saying, we've got a problem. It was a half a million dollar mistake. I know. <laughs> So I've seen all sorts of different things. So please, yeah, honestly, there's no silly questions because the person next to you is probably thinking of it but potentially not brave enough to ask. So please put your hand up if you've got any questions. What we've got here, that one. and excuse my poor building skills, uh, this is a typical corner detail that we find for vertical ship mm -hmm. And what you'll see on here, excuse me, me have an accent, is the nail line. And this, the nails are on a slight upward slope. So we want any water that runs down, hits the nail, and run down the face of the weatherboard and away from. We're trying to protect this. This is a 50 year warranty. This is a 15 to 20 year warranty. But we want to protect the framing at all costs. That's what we're trying to protect. So we're trying to keep the water outside the building. Okay? When the builders are building, forehand nail always goes down, backhand nail always goes up. So you want the builders to be doing backhand nailing as much as possible. It always works better that way. You're pre-drilling all of the cedar nails. Every single nail will be pre-drilled. And then you put the nails in. If you try to apply a 75 mil nail into cedar without it being pre-drilled, you're going to split boards. There's no question. So pre-drill. Cedar is expensive. It's a good quality luxury product. We don't want you coming back to us and saying, I need another 15 boards because these ones split on me. So pre-drill all of those. Um, and when you put it in, I probably use the crown head nails. It's a bit easier for your builders to use. A lot of people just go to the rose head nails, but the crown head nails have a little flat pad on the top, and it's a lot easier for the builder to use. You get less slippage. What I would do with nails, I'd get a little tin plate of some plastic or some plywood, maybe two or three mils thick, and just slide it up underneath, and then hammer away. Because if you miss, and you will miss, you'll bruise the timber. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Protect the timber. Protect the timber, absolutely. That's exactly what we're trying to do. And the nails that we recommend, the silicon bronze or stainless steel. So not galvanised, um, it must be silicon bronze or stainless steel. Copper oil? It's got copper content in it, yes. Yeah, so that's a, that's a bronzy colour. And then if you want the nails to be a feature, I'd use a stainless steel nail. 
If you want the nails to kind of disappear into the background a bit, I'd use the silicon bronze. They will fade a lot more. The, silica, the stainless steel nails will be around for quite some time. You will see them for quite some time. Now, some people like that look, and there's no problems with that, but it will be a feature. So it is something you need to consider when you're making your decision on your nails. The other thing to think about is you may see some specifications with 18 mil thick weatherboard and 28 mil thick weatherboard. And you can get variation for different looks and different styles. Um, and as Hamish will probably back it up, that the nail has to enter the, um, through the cavity into, into the building, into the timber, 30 mil inside into the timber. So you said you don't into the frame? Into the frame, yes. Yeah. So 30, 30 more penetration into the frame. Um, and you achieve that by using in this situation, we use a 75 mm nail. And Reese was talking about a thicker weatherboard, and we go to tw uh, an 85 mm nail. Similarly, if you've got a rad board, and quite a lot of buildings nowadays have rad boards on them, you would also have a look at the rad board and do your calculation and see if you need to go to an 85 mm nail or not. Sometimes you don't have to. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. So a 6 mm, you're probably going to be okay, but a 9 mm rad board, you might need to go to a bigger nail. Okay. Um, in terms of the bantam sitting in behind, again, it's really, really important. What we've done is we've gone away and we've tested these bantams. So the winds that we've tested this system into is if you were standing outside, it's 55 meters per second wind speed. So if you're standing up and it's blowing that fast, you fall down. You cannot stand up in that wind, it is too strong. The bantams are designed for any moisture that gets into the cavity over time to hit the top of the, of the cavity, run down the front face, off, and then down to the bottom of the cavity. And we leave the cavity open and exposed like that, so we want the air to come through. We want any moisture that's in there to dry. If you are doing roof plants, or you've got brickwork, or steel work, or things like that, we have some other battens that you can use, which are 40 or 45 mil battens, and they can be used structurally. And I can talk to you about those ones, because there's a bit more technical stuff on those. But you can save yourself anywhere up to two weeks on a job by using structural battens over thinner 20 mil battens. So time is money, so you can save yourself quite a bit of time on a project if you've got a repay or something like that. It's well worth having a look at. It's a really, really good option. Um, in terms of um, the fixing points, we have the main base nail that goes in. Now, we've got some prizes somewhere. Go right there. Yep. So we've got some prizes somewhere, so there are questions at the end, and whoever gets it right gets the prize. Um, the clinch nail is a nail we're trying to avoid nailing through the lap at all costs. Now, I said about the nine houses before, I've seen guys doing jolt nails, um, hatted nails, and a 10 gauge screw in the lap to try and hold the board in place. We don't want to do that. We've put the clinch nail in place, it does a couple of really, really good things. It doesn't pierce the lap, which is the thing that we're trying to do the least. We don't want to pierce the lap. If you have a piercing in the lap and a main face nail, the board will want to move over time, it's timber, it will split at its weakest point. This board is only 6 mil thick in here, and quite a lot of people in the past have been nailing through the weather groove. It will start to split in behind and it starts causing issues, so we want to avoid that at all costs. The next thing the nail does is it lines up the weather groove. So the next board slides up against it, it lines up the weather grooves that we need along here, lines them all up, and it gives you a 2 mil expansion gap at the back of the board. So if the board gets wet and it wants to expand, it can do that and contract it. Again. So it needs to have that. We must have had this, this, this level. Yeah. Yes. And they, and they are lined, they flesh. Yeah. They don't, they don't, don't let them twist. It holds it in place. It's not a, it's not a fixing nail, it's a yeah. holding nail. I know, you know, they, they, they level them properly in the place. Yes. And then those, those, those levels are thrown in the place. Hold the whole thing together. This, how safe this one? I just a little bit. I just Two millimeters and 40 millimeters long. Oh, 44. Yeah, so just going in to hold the board in place before you put the big face nail in there. Okay, does that mm -hmm. make sense? Yeah. One of the other things that we get quite a bit of is a lot of people are looking to do dark colours on the houses now as well. Yeah. You're getting people asking for, I want a black house, I want a dark colour on my house. There's a couple of different ways we can help you up with that. The darker you go, the, board, the more board movement we expect to see. So we expect to see board movement when you get dark colours. This one here is what I would call a flat grain board. And this one here is what I would call a vertical grain wall. If I was to coat this wall in black, I would expect to see movement on this board and not on this one. 
So that's the flat brain and the vertical brain. And the reason for that is, the flat brain board, the grain is sitting like this. And if it heats up, and it will heat up with the black, it can kind of fold up on itself. And what happens is when that's up on the wall, it folds out and back. And the sun goes across and then disappears. And out and back and out and back, and then over time it stays out. And that's what the cupping is. That's the wind with the top lap on the board moving. That's why, that's why the board the twist here. That's right. The heat, the heat's doing all of that. I recently attended a brand seminar and they talked about the measurable heat on a weather board. In an 18 degree day, so the temperature was 18 degrees, the weather boards on a white weather board house was 54 degrees. So that's how much heat is being held by the sun. That's on a white house. So you can imagine what it's like in a black house. It'll be too hot to touch. So that all that is affecting the timber and it's wanting to move. This board here is a vertical grain board. So the vertical grain is sitting straight up and down, and if it wants to move, it has to pull itself apart to be able to move. It makes it really, really stable. So if you're looking to do a dark colored house, talk to Yuan, talk to ourselves, we can give you some advice on what profiles will be better for you and what profiles definitely not to use. So there's some profiles I would definitely not use in a dark house. Some are more cost effective than others, but you need to have a look at those considerations. And then you can make an educated decision. Rather than the phone call six months later so with a customer saying, why is my house moving? I've got cut boards everywhere. So, educated decision, then you can make it, you can talk to the homeowners and say, if you want to go in this colour, these are the added costs to do that. Um, now, in terms of our, um, our flashings that sit in behind and our corner mouldings, the corner mouldings can be stuck on with a mechanical fixing, so you can have a nail face through into here, or you can glue it on like I have done in this situation. So, I've used Bostick Seal and Flex or Secret Facade, AT Facade is another good product. When you're sticking it on, you need a flexible adhesive because the timber is going to move. And if you've got a film forming glue, it will fracture and break and the mowing will fall off over time. So you need a film, a, um, a flexible adhesive for that. You can actually run a nail through there as well. A lot of guys now are running a nail through here into the opposing batter and then they're dropping down a nail line on the other side and nail it on the other side just so they don't get a clash of nails in the middle. Um, if it's got a nail and a glue on there, it's not coming out. So you'll be fine. Okay. Um, now, uh, flashing sitting in behind. It's a really important thing. I see a lot of flashings on site. Um, I saw one just the other day. It was a 50 mil hemmed flashing. Now, it's sitting behind this corner. That corner is 58 mils wide. So that means the flashing finished before the water got in. So the point of ingress is the key to it all. So where the moisture can get in, and in this situation, it's right here. So in this situation, it's about 60 mils from the corner. So you need a bigger flashing. All of our details that you see in front of you show the molding and the applicable flashing in behind. So you've got the right flashing. So you can look at that with confidence and say, okay, I'm gonna be okay with that. Is there any flashing, no flashing there? Yep, there's a flashing sitting behind me. Oh, yeah. Yep, the that runs in behind. Yeah. Uh, aluminium. 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 Yep. And we've used the aluminium one because when we tested the system, it was the best one on the market at the time. It's by far and away the best product. There are some other good flashing systems out there at the moment, but unless they're part of the system, you can let yourself down. And if you have any issues going forward, you can save a little bit of money today and cost you a whole heap of money later. So perhaps it's better to spend the extra $5 just to make sure that that's right. Um, the rules of engagement are 50 mils from this point here that way, with a hemmed flashing. Or 75 mils with an unhemmed flashing. What I've found with the builders on site is it's easier to use an unhemmed flashing. So we've gone for a lot of unhemmed flashing and we've over-engineered them so they're a little bit bigger than what they need to be. But we've done that on purpose because then everybody's covered. What the other thing is, with vertical ship back, you were gonna nail through the flashing. There's no way around it. You will nail through that flashing. So what I would recommend is running a bit of silicon just along any nailing line and then the builder will nail through that and puncture that and that'll be sealed up with the silicon. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. So the most important things to, to try and remember for the builder when he's ordering or whoever is doing the ordering when it comes to um, him and the product or him and the product is when they order the cedar, they, you want the builder to order the what we call this 
vertibat, so it's the double bevel with the castellation. That's the pine version. You can also, uh, yeah, the timber version. You can also use the green plastic cavi bat. I'm, I'm not too sure if you know this, but there's a um, cavi bat. You can use that as well as part of Hermpack system. You also need to order, as Hamish just said, the flashings. These are aluminium flashings. So we have we stock this. So the the, the cavity battens, the flashings, which we have in 75 mil, 90 mil, and a 140 mil. Um, the clinch nails. And the, and the fixing nails. So these are the things that you want, want to be ordering for vertical ship lap. For the, for the horizontal, you, can use, you, can, you need everything bar the, you can use a, your own pine batten, for instance, from, from placemakers, because it's, 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 that's, that's a different system. Yep. Um, and finally, it is recommended that all the boards um, are coated all four sides with a, with a stain or an oil. We offer that service as well through what's called machine coat. So we can send the boards to site uh, pre-stained or pre-oiled. Our recommended um, options are Resine Waterborne Woodsman and Woodex Traditional Oil. Um, just in regards to paint finish, sometimes we get builders asking us or homeowners asking us to provide a paint finish product. We can do that in cedar. Breaks my heart, cedar's so beautiful, but we do do paint finish on cedar. Um, we would talk to you about the different finishes that you would achieve on that, whether you have a dress face board, whether you have a quarter sawn board to give you a better finish, depending on the size of the board you're doing, and more importantly, the light reflective values. So a light reflective value is the measurable amount of light that comes off a painted surface and how much heat it holds on to. So to give you an idea, black is zero. Cedar, we can go to 40 as a colour. And then anything below that, down to maybe 35, we would need to have a conversation with you about the profile that you're using, the grain that you're using, and the paint system that you're using. Ash Endura is another one of our painted products. It's very, very, very well priced in terms of comparing it to cedar. In fact, Ash Endura, pre-primed and undercoated, is cheaper than cedar is as a bare timber. So if you're looking for a paint finish, talk to Yuan about that. We can help you out with that as well. Pine, for instance, is around 55 plus as an allowable paint finish, like reflective value, on a job. So the council are getting a lot more strict on this and they're coming back and they're asking for manufacturer sign off. I recently had a job that was at a 17, they finished the job and they're asking me to sign it off. We cannot sign it off, they cannot get code of compliance because their coat, their paint is now at 17, it's too low. No one can sign it off for it. So they can't get code of compliance, they're struggling for insurance, it causes all sorts of issues. Okay, so talk to us about it. Um, the Ash Enduro is available in bevel back, vertical ship lap, and in horizontal. Now when you're working with bevel back or a paint finished product, there's a couple of different options for nails. If you want the nails to be seen, quite often we'll get builders will use the nails at a picture, and they'll do the colour on the paint, and then they'll use a stainless steel nail, or perhaps a silicon bronze nail, and they'll use that as a picture, and they'll leave that proud. Or the other option is you can have a jolt head nail, and that's punched through the timber, filled, and then sanded over. There's a couple of different options there. Um, another thing we, uh, we've seen, so the, the, these were the boards, um, uh, they're the 100 mil, aren't they? Yeah. They're yeah. uh, X100. The standard size weatherboard, you guys may or may not know, uh, X150 mil or an X200 mil. We've seen a lot of builders get all the right product, the, the right accessories, the accessories, the right um, product for the system, but they have nailed it incorrectly. Yeah. So for a board, for a wide board, it's still one nail. We see people doing two nails. This is wrong. We see uh, people nailing in the middle. This is wrong. Yeah. Um, you can elaborate on that a bit yeah, more? Yeah, look, I've, I've got a job in Point Chevalier where the homeowner dictated to the to the builder saying that I want two nails because they had a board with a negative detail down the middle so they had and the builder had put one nail in and the homeowner said no, no I want a second nail in there to make sure it stays up and the builder said I don't think that's the way you do it but he never checked the homeowner said you need to put another nail in he went around and renailed the whole house put the second nail in council came around and said that's not right <laughs> take it off do it again expensive yeah the whole lot it's really expensive. So the, the nailing rules are 30 to 35 mils in from the top lap, yeah, one nail per board. So that one's sitting, so that's a 65 mil cutting board. So you can see on here, on the top lap, I've 
come in 30 to 35 miles in, and there's one male on that wall. So in that situation, they put two in on a wide wall. Yeah, really, really expensive mistake. No, only only allowed the one one male on each wall. One male on the wall. It's a really wide one or a skinny one. One male. Yeah, really and it, so from, from the corner, from the lap detail, 30 to 35 millimetres, not in the, not centre, 30 to 35. No, from the, the one side? Yeah, from the, from the slab, yeah, so 30 to 35. Oh yeah, no, that's Yeah, it. and that's for every board, X100, X150, X200. Oh, yeah. And both, both sides that go to the, go to another, another level? What we have seen in the past is that some buildings are being knocked out at 800 for vertical, 
So we've had to say that's not acceptable. So the builder, yeah, has to put an extra one in to make it 400. Yeah. But if, but for so eight, take four eight, four, no, he had, he had to put one extra, yeah, to, to <laughs> in the middle. So, but otherwise, 408. As long as you know, on a 480 for vertical shit lap is a maximum. You can't go higher than 480. 480. You can make 200, 300, or why? Yeah, Andrew, but we, advice, we do that the smaller one. We, we need to talk to you about it. Yeah. Um, if you do come across that situation, talk to us because we do have some solutions for different things, and we can help you out. The structural bands work really, really well when you when your knob spaces are too big. You don't have to have a knob behind it. So you can go the whole from the floor to the ceiling with no knobs using structural bands. So if you're doing like a green green space house, green side house, where you have the, the thermal bridging, you don't actually have to have a knob. You can get away with not having any whatsoever. Just another option. There's plenty of options. Okay. okay. The other other thing to uh, to maybe think about as well is like if if we supply the cedar to you uh, with a with a coating from from Hempac, um, we will do it with all four sides uh, through a machine. And then when the builder is all the, the builder is on site, it is recommended when he does when he makes any cuts that he we, we should supply a little like four liter or one liter, and he needs to uh, coat the cuts. That's very, that's, that's highly recommended. And if if you if your if your builders or if you guys take the cedar not coated from us, you want the painter to do all four sides and any any cuts that they make on site. So we you know that that is that is our best practice and highly recommended. It is, it is a lot easier to get it machine coated. The reason that Reese is talking about getting it coated all four sides is, is if the moisture does get on the, into the back of the boards and it can travel through to the front, what happens? The sun's drawing it through, remember? But if it's coming through at different rates and the timber might be a little bit denser in this part of the in this part here, it might be a little bit denser there, and then it's trying to come through here and it's a little bit easier, it's a little bit more open. So all of a sudden, the timber starts to twist and move because it, moisture's coming out faster here than it is from down here. So it's, it's starting to move around. Decking does that a bit as well. So if you're doing decking, recommend, if it's close to the ground, coat it. Put a, a coat of oil on it, and it'll help the decking immensely. It makes a big difference. Cedar, cedar is more stable and durable than other, like pine and other timber products that are in yeah. the market. So you can leave it uncoated. It's just that, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's more prone to have movement if you don't this coat it. Is this place on the bottom or on the top? That's the bottom. Yep, that's the cavity closer. Oh, yeah, and on the top you don't need to do it. Yep. Yeah, that's the bottom. That's the very bottom. Yeah. So with our with our batten system, we've actually had our battens tested to be a cavity closer. So the V1 birdie bat is one of the few battens in the marketplace that is tested as a cavity closer. So if the budget's getting tight, there are options on that as well. You can actually use the batten as a cavity closer around the base of walls where it's not going to be seen. If you want to use um, where it's going to be seen, like above on a Safit line or above doorways or garage doors or things like that, you perhaps would use the aluminium cavity closure. It looks a lot sharper. But where it's not going to be seen, it's another option. So there's options on options. So make sure you specify the batten that you're after, which is the V1 Verdi bat, um, because there are a lot of battens in the market. And I've seen, again, um, I had a job in Devonport. Um, the builder put, had three houses and he'd done the top levels. He'd had a building inspector come through had a look at everything, signed it all off, he put the top level of cedar up on the three houses and he started to come down the next level, he had another building inspector come out for a different reason, he saw the battens, realised they were the wrong ones, take it off, do it again. So he had three houses with the wrong battens on, he had a square top batten and a square bottom batten and it's the wrong batten. It's, it's just, yeah, make sure you stick to the system. Because the council are getting tighter and tighter and tighter, as you know. And you'll get one council inspector picking you up on it, and the next one not. You know what it's like. You get a variety of guys out there. So, so you have nothing with you. Eh? That's another one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. any, any more questions, guys? Anything? But anything, like I say, don't be shy. We're here to help. Yeah. And uh, I saw them, lots of good hearts, the don't they use a wallpaper. They use the plywood or Red board. Or yep. party plant. Yep. Does it make better, eh? It makes it, if you structurally fix it, it makes the framing stronger, yes, yep. 
Um, I've seen a variety of, there's a lot of different products. The cement board or plywood. Yeah, yeah. There's a, there's, a, there's a whole range of different products out there. But um, as Reese was saying before, we do a lot of hardwoods, so we do a lot of oak flooring, engineered flooring, um, hardwood decking. There's some rules and some things you should be aware about on decking as well. If you want the wider boards or the skinny boards, if you're close to the ground, um, I'd go for a skinnier board. I wouldn't go to the wide boards because the moisture is going to get drawn up and the boards will start to rot out quicker. And movement as well, you get cupping and bits and pieces like that. But we can talk to you about that on those projects if you like. Okay. Well, good. That's my, that's yeah, my so I think, tricks. So I think, the, yeah, if anything that we, you can take away from this, we just would like you to, to know that when it comes to herm, herm pack and, and cedar uh, weatherboards, that we have a, a system. So yeah, when, you, when you're ordering the weatherboards, please remember the, we, we also stock vertibat, aluminium flashings, clinch nails, fixing nails, and the um, cavity closer. So. You serve like that only in the timber, but also the whole system. The whole system. So you can order that with placemakers, the whole thing. Usually what happens, the timber will get ordered the, the weatherboards will get ordered first because depending on what profile, because we have now maybe 4,000 4, profiles in our system, that it may be a lead time of three to four weeks if we are machining the timber and coating it. Um, where was it going, this is? Uh, and the, the, battens and the battens and the accessories, usually we, we supply earlier for the builder to put up, obviously, so we can, we can usually get the accessories out within three or four days. So usually it's two separate orders. You do one order for the accessories, one order for the weatherboards. Um,
So cedar, cedar, the cheapest yeah. way of cedar is called mixed grain. Oh, that's a this one. So we have one of water, say for 1,000 meters. Yeah. And we have some extra of this grain. So this one is more than this one. Most of them, more better. More better for dark colors. Dark colors.
cheaper product called Asher, and we can paint this. But yes, it's, it's, it doesn't have the, um, the natural look, you know, it will look, it will look glossy or painful, not so. So we can still do Cedar is usually stained in oil. So it, it brings out the natural like it, it, it like the, the oil enhances the timber and it gives you a it brings out the, the natural characteristic. A paint you just you don't see the grain, you don't see this, it just covers it up. I think, I think the um, we'll leave my cards. So, I need to take off to a meeting.
What's the what's the price? Um, how how much how much expensive the wearable? <laughs> Depends. This, look at you use its profile. It has it has different size and size. But average, I think one inch is about ten dollars. Wearable. Wearable is the cheapest. OTC is the cheapest. Wearable is about one inch is about $6.50. 就是一倍的价钱。威德布最贵的，目前我们用的 t r u e p o i n t Garrison 的，有些华人，呃，华人用的比较少，华人都用，洋人用的比较多。那个一米可能八块多九块吧，但这个是最贵的。好，咱是呃，那那个那个人工呢？人工差不多。
in mind for that particular profile. It will also tell you how many battens you need, how many nails you need, how many clinch nails you need. So it tells you the nails that you need, the size nail, how many nails you need for that many weatherboards, the lineal meters you need, because you said it was 100 square meters, how many liters of stain or paint or oil, and how many battens you will need. So it actually helps you. So it's your website? Yeah, just go to the website. Perfect. <laughs> no issues. <laughs> So you need to factor in some wastage, but but um, yeah, it's pretty. It's, it's works pretty well. <laughs> yeah, we'll give you the best price. Six As always. Six million. Oh, yeah. <laughs> of course. Cool. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.